Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Ask the Lawyer. Today we will be talking about the spread of fake news uh, by some journalists, public intellectuals and uh, foreign diplomats, um, retired diplomats and uh, international media in the backdrop of abrogation of 370, Article 370 in Kashmir Valley, uh, Jammu, State of Jammu and Kashmir. Uh, we will be joined by Supreme Court lawyer uh, Mr. Vaibhav Chadha who would be talking about what fake news is, how fake news gets uh, credibility because of it is uh, spread by uh, public intellectuals and people who hold uh, positions of eminence. Uh, Mr. Chadha would also throw light on uh, various foreign judgments and jurisdictions where uh, foreign countries have enacted laws to tackle the issue of fake news. And he would also suggest ways how we can do this in India. So, welcome to uh, Ask the Lawyer Vaipo. Uh, uh, can you uh, please tell us that uh, how the menace of fake news impacted the credibility of media in India and how it has also plagued the minds of Indian masses? Yeah. So, I would like to begin from the incident which actually brought the, this whole issue of fake news into the limelight which was the issue of 2018 when two young guys who were travelling in, in Karbionglong district in Assam and they were lynched on accusations of being child lifters. So around charge, uh, charges were filed against around 48 people were arrested, I was following the news at that time and many people were arrested and there were one or two main masterminds. So it was basically those one or two persons who actually instigated others telling them these are the child lifters. Actually there were some incidents of child lifting or children, human tra children trafficking or something but they instigated this thing. So what this led to was other people gathering, stopping the car in which these uh, boys were, young boys were travelling and they were lynched mutually on, so being su on suspicion of being child lifters. So that's how we get to know and that's why government took many measures and WhatsApp even reduced the forwarding of messages only to five persons. Okay, so it was because of that incident, the uh, WhatsApp? Ma I would say that was the major incident, but there were many few other incidents which were happening at that time, which government took into account and asked WhatsApp to restrict and uh, WhatsApp restricted the limits as well to five messages or something, forward messages or something to reduce the spreading of fake news. Now, how do people follow these fake news or something people as you understood that though there were two main people who were actually behind this whole scene of child lifting theory of those two young guys so that's what happens today or as you just mentioned after the abrogation of article 370 in Jammu and Kashmir thankfully Jammu and Kashmir uh, police as well as the information and broadcasting department of the state is actually very active on Twitter and responding to each and every and most of the tweets which are fake tweets or yeah fake news which is being spread like we saw many incidents being some making false ac accusations against the Indian army they are doing brutality against kids or something many incidents yeah right? they, they wrote something like uh, yes. some people some yes, prominent yes, yes. people on Twitter with verified yeah. handles that is the sole problem when people who are recognized let's assume let's talk about Twitter if someone has a blue tick on his name or something then people automatically would believe whatever he or she says people will be inclined to believe that whatever he or she is saying is true so that's why they fall prey to such mischievous acts of these people, selected few people, and they f follow and they s further sp they uh, think start, whatever saying start is spreading these fake news to uh, further their agenda, their hidden agenda or something. So we have to keep in mind those things and I think the government is actually taking good measures to control fake news and other things. But it also comes on the part of the society and people themselves to know when and how to check whether they should, before spreading any message or further, they should cross check it. Otherwise, we have this scenario of lynching, uh, this Assam lynching, I told you, the young guys and other things happening. So, I think that's the best measure. People can be aware of such things. Sometimes bots are there. So, people see so many retweets or other things and they think, oh, that's true. So, many oh, so the, the, there is also um, a tendency amongst people that uh, uh, if a tweet has a large number of retweets, people assume that it's going to be true because it has been uh, retweeted by some of the most prominent people on Twitter. Um, a, a case in point is India, wherein if some uh, 
particular verified hand twitter handle tweet something it may be mischievous and it has been retweeted by certain other people some professors some media personnel some public intellectuals um, people assume it to be true without in fact verifying those things yes yeah, that's the only that's the sole problem that people need to understand and follow the news properly otherwise and they must cross check with the government agencies like the jammu and kashmir government there was uh, i was checking there was a fake news regarding the shortage of medicine supplies and everything in Ka in kashmir valley itself however the uh, government clarified that we have a huge stock of uh, medicines already in place and so people would, people need not need to worry about it so that's how uh, that's one way to handle it no a positive thing here is uh, that most of the government departments of various states and the center are now on twitter their officers are on twitter the department themselves are uh, having their own handles and which are very prompt in responding in responding to these uh, issues uh, i think it is incumbent upon people the users of social media to uh, to verify, uh, to verify th things to and then for the uh, yes because But they make yes what i what problem i see here is that people of eminence when they write something uh they they also hold a position of responsibility uh but they don't care about it and they spread the fake news and people fall see uh, at the end you cannot blame the people for uh, uh, doing this because they believe what uh, people of eminence or people in the positions of responsibility say uh student leaders um, uh, young politicians um, uh, your uh, professors media persons they are all into spreading fake news i, I think in just in case of jammu and kashmir i think in the last 3 uh, weeks or so 5 3 or 4 weeks uh, a large number number of false propaganda has been busted by some of the um, common people on twitter are uh, doing this i i, I know uh, somebody by a twitter handle called i ankur singh Um, uh, twitter user he um, um, does it on his own he uh, in fact goes out of his way to uh, bust the fake news propaganda so what do you think should be the role of people in general in 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 these situ situations see th the role has to be two ways i mean the government also needs to step in as well as people need to understand their own responsibility of what the repercussion their fake news can have i'll come to the government part uh, uh, next but uh, about the yeah uh, so i'll talk, talk about this thing that people need to understand their responsibilities and duties as as in not to spread unnecessary fake news they need to understand things rather than going for a rumor mongering or something which can have serious repercussions so i think people need to have their own thing they need to cross check everything check with the, the government government, government agencies yes and agencies. as you correctly pointed out there are so many uh, most department government ministries and department including railways and other things are on uh, twitter and facebook and other social media uh, places and they are uh, actually busting many fake news yeah. such, such stories which are coming up and they are very prompt so i think that's one way of government that's through the government's way tackling through this fake news narrative and which is being created for peddling some agendas or something i do not know what ex it exactly is by some people but yeah something is wrong and i think some people are, want to spread their agenda or something through fake news and they want to make a uh, they are trying to just bolster yeah. their point and that's yeah and it is also aimed at uh, creating unrest in the country if i am not wrong they want to Uh, inside violence uh, create it's, unrest and make people go against Assam, their own Assam, governments you know i'm saying assam incident was a, this sort of incident which led to violence it led to the murder, killing of two young guys due to this so i think if these things are government if the government didn't uh, could not have stepped in earlier uh, earlier place in jammu and kashmir specifically then i'm sure there would have been worst law and order problems however the government handled it very well uh just busting all these myths and this fake news agenda well but before i come to the uh, uh, role of the government in tackling fake news i just wanted to know if other countries other jurisdictions have enacted laws with regard to fake news or not and if yes uh, how what are uh, what are those laws and how do they govern such laws yes uh, i was uh, many countries have enacted laws malaysia france uh, china russia these countries have laws to uh, control fake news and other things even japan i was following they uh, have 
uh, there was a guy who was spreading information that after Komomoti, um, for, my pronunciation may be wrong for the, there was a place uh, where the earthquake came or something and they said there was a lion on the run. So this created a uh, panic amongst people and they were, f uh, eventually that guy was arrested. Interestingly, there's another case of Malaysia uh, where this Danish citizen was there and he said there was a shooting incident in Malaysia and he made a false allegations against the police that uh, it police took 50 minutes to arrive or to uh, respond to the call or something however he was arrested later uh, unable to pay some fine or something and he was maybe arrested he uh, agreed to undergo some imprisonment for some time in because he wasn't able to pay the fine but the police said that it was not 50 minutes it took only eight minutes to respond to the call so you see this thing even they took it very seriously and the person is behind well, the those, uh, 50 minutes and eight minutes remind me of an incident where uh, um, the uh, riots in Gujarat that took place on the 27th, 28th of 27th of February uh, in 2002. Uh, somebody said that Mr. Modi, who was the uh, chief minister then uh, of the state of Gujarat, uh, took three days to call the Indian Army because the Indian Army arrived on the 1st of uh, March. Um, they forgot that while the riots took place on the 27th and 28th, the month of February was only of 28 days and the Indian Army actually came the very next day on the 1st of March. So there was not a lapse of three days. So this is a classic example of fake news wherein you deliberately, you know for a fact that the, that the month of February has only 28 days and despite that you say that because the riots took place on 28th and the army was called on 1st of March, which is the very next day, but you deliberately say that no, no, it took three days to do that. And this has been done by some of the m most mm, well-known public intellectuals who write in media see, and see, who teach see, at various see, universities. That's what I say. Social media is a good friend as well as the enemy. It's a good friend because if social media would have been at that time, some people would have or the government would have come out exactly. and openly said with yes. a uh, tweet or something that this thing is happening and government is following. This would have been busted then and there. Yeah. Then and there, yeah. But now I'm saying social media has both benefits and it has demerits as well. So that's the way people come up with fake agenda or some false news and then people who counter these agendas and f news. So I think yeah, that's the thing. So uh, can you give me some examples from the foreign jurisdictions, how they have enacted their laws uh, yes, dealing with uh, fake? Now I'll point out to some uh, foreign jurisdictions which have laws in their place. Initially I will talk about Malaysia, which has a Malaysia Anti-Fake News Act and uh, under which a person, an offender can be punished for six years in jail and a fine up to 500,000 ringgit. Uh, and then Singapore. Singapore, uh, I would like to point out because Singapore has recently brought, up, brought in a very, very strict law to curb uh, fake news and it's, the law is called the Protection from Online Falsehoods and Manipulation Act. Yeah. And it was implemented uh, to protect the people from the provocative or malicious contents which was against the interest of Singapore yeah. and uh, is why I say the strict laws because it has punishment which may send you in jail term for up to 10 years and a fine up to 1 million dollars oh that's huge that's huge. that's huge then Russia Russia in April 2019 had signed a law which gave power to the state to block websites and impose fines on those who spread what the authorities, what the authorities in Russia regard to be a fake news or shows disrespect towards the government online. Okay. And the penalty for that can be 400,000 rubles for circulating fake news online. Then we have France, which has recently passed in 2018 two anti-fake news laws and under those laws uh, even you can have a punishment of up to one year in prison and a fine of 75,000 euros again we see these laws are coming in place so uh, as we talk uh, uh, people often say that the government should in the guy in the guise of uh, fake news anti fake news law the freedom of speech or expression may be curtailed or something yeah, yeah i was coming to that so yeah no so i'll take you to that point in the sense that people who say these things and they call India to be regressive in some aspect or for not having, if they have these laws, it will be against India's interest or constitution or whatever. I'll take you to the Europe, Germany. Germany has Germany had enacted this law, NETS DG. Uh, it, it asked for the social media companies to uh, rein in, to control all these fake news, hate speech and the fake 
propaganda which is being circulated and it gives only 24 hours deadline to companies to comply with or to remove this content uh, content if not uh, they can face a fine up to 50 million euros some critics have also said that this has sent this has sent a shilling effect in in amongst people in germany who are afraid of talking or writing things on uh, social media websites. even i would consider this to be a bit uh, strict yeah, for people yeah, yeah. to people are not free to give their opinions but my point is if germany european democracy can have such laws why not India? I'm not saying for to to be such harsh laws or yeah, something. Yeah, yeah. Maybe depending on the circumstances. But at least there should be law which should act as a deterrent for people. There should be a special legislation uh, which would act as a deterrent in the sense that people would be uh, would think twice before uh, spreading such a news or uh, yes, such, I, uh, false I, cert I certainly think so. We must have such laws depending on the circumstances uh, i mean the basic uh, considering the basic structure in india we have diversity and everything government should take into consultation various ngos or uh, police or other government agencies and then maybe draft one law there is a need otherwise you see such people who were spreading fake news indian people who were many journalists some student activists are openly spreading such fake news how to deal about it there are no action yet taken against them so I think the government should come up with some anti-fake news laws, depending on the circumstances and maybe vary it as compared to other countries. Thank you so much, Vaibhav. Uh, this was Vaibhav Chadha in conversation with me, Shubhendu Anand, uh, talking about uh, the uh, fake news, the menace of fake news and how to tackle them and how various other countries in the world have uh, enacted laws to tackle them. Uh, next week, we would be coming up with another issue of legal importance and we would be discussing the same with a subject matter expert. Till then, thank you, have a good day.